All right, we're going to try to get into this because there's not really a whole bunch of time to, like, tweak it and prepare it. And, you know, we're living in a certain dispensation, a certain age. The only thing I can say is to get your um, your pen and your paper. Well, first, come with a willing, a willing and a ready mind, hopefully a newborn mind, a mind that's not conformed to the world or a mind that's seeking to be unconformed and not conformed to the world but transform by the renewing of your mind in the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, with that being said, grab your pen and your paper and bring the sacred scripture, the B-I-B-L-E, and be prepared to receive. Be prepared to receive the truth. Not just from what I'm saying, but go verify it. In, in other words, go search it out for yourself. Here, listen. Listen to what this warner, this proclaimer is saying, but with the time that is still available, with the time that one still has, check it out for yourself. Listen, take good notes, and go and check it out for yourself. Now, send some... I guess you'll say 9-11, this is all in this particular season with the 9-11, or for us as Ethiopian Hebrews, the 9-12. 9-11, September 11th, usually is the Ethiopian solar new year. There's 13 months of sunshine, so forth and so on. We can explain that. But the Ethiopic or the Ethiopian calendar being a... Christian calendar, in the sense of a true Christian calendar, is solar oriented. And now we touched on the solar and the lunar, the lunar and the solar, and how the heavens, how the heavens is God's clockwork. In other words, like we have a watch. Some people have a watch on their wrist, wrist, and others may have a clock on the wall. The sky or the heavens is the Almighty's clockwork. Unfortunately, in this shitty and city life that most of us have been by hook or by crook forced to live in, we don't even understand how the heavens work. And every time if we look up at the heavens and we want to find out, there are some um, religious so-called zealots that are telling us that we are worshiping. We're not to worship uh, astrology or zoology or whatever else like that. Yet, our governments will spend billions of dollars, take it away from health care, from education, from everything else, spend billions of dollars researching the far-off recesses of outer space. These are just a couple of the things that make you wonder, hmm, What's up with that? But they keep you, they keep everyone in the rat race. They try to keep us all in this rat race. And the gig is up. In other words, we're coming to some very interesting times. And we're not going to act like we're going to tell you well, where you should go. You should be here. You should be there. You could be in Africa. You could be in America. You could be in North Pole. You could be in Europe. You could be in South America, the Caribbean. I mean, true, there are certain places that's going to be more affected than other places, but it's not a guarantee because ones are in Africa. I mean, look at the drought situation that's going on in, in East Africa, the Horn of Africa, Somalia, Kenya, and some of the Ethiopia regions. And then look at the drought that's been going on over here in Texas. You understand? Texas, the fires and the floods. So if you're looking for easy solutions, stop. And it was easy solutions to say that, well, you're not going to experience the changes that we are now on the cusp or, 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 or a greater manifestation. We're already in that time of change. In fact, some say um, when the world is going to end and the, 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 the whole 2012, you, you probably heard a lot about the 2012 thing and um, the Mayan calendar and the end of the world. Well, the ending of this world system has already begun. In, in fact, the ending of this world system has already begun decades ago. You understand that, that so-called day of the Lord, humanity has already missed that. But, but in the mercy of the Almighty, you know, in the mercy of the Almighty, 
we are what we are, and here we are, and we still have an opportunity to preach and to proclaim the good news, the gospel, the half of the story that hasn't been told until now. But what we want to address here with the week or so that we have, with the, about, actually it's be a less than seven days, it's the 22nd now, and some were saying that there's some signs or alignments for the 22nd for this day. We haven't seen or felt the real manifestation or effects of it, but we don't actually, we don't doubt that as well. What we're pointing to right now is the Hebraic Feast of Trumpets, or the Yom Teruah, the, 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 the festival of trumpets, which according to the lunar, the lunar um, calculation of time, will occur this year in the Hebraic order and in the, quote, Jewish sense, it will occur this year on September 28th, September 28th. And now, with that being said, we want to address the point about Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur. If you've watched um, one of the earlier videos, we just briefly put it out there that Yom Kippur doesn't occur. In other words, Yom Kippur doesn't appear in the Bible. Yom Kippur usually is a two-day celebration among um, modern European Jews. It's a two-day celebration. But biblically speaking, scripturally speaking, what they cover up, what they cover up is the Feast of Trumpets. The Feast of Trumpets in that seventh month, it actually marks, it actually marks the beginning of the civil year and the announcement of the fall festivals. So the announcement of the fall festivals is what is actually upcoming. Now, there seems to be a comment. Some of you all probably have already been watching about this, and there were, there were a couple of comments that were brought to our attention concerning a possible alignment around 9-11. Um, around and this actually, um, when we heard it, we said, let's look up, see what's going on. Now, we've been hearing about different comments. We've been hearing about Nibiru, and some of this is plausible. We're not discounting it, but, but with our scientific approach to it, based on the spiritual and scriptural truth of the word, we have to get a little more information before we, as they say, buy into it or before we invest it or before we go off, like a lot of folks been saying, oh, Nibiru, this is all about this star Nibiru. And, and, and you say, well, how do you know this? Oh, I've seen a video. And, yeah, the video, man, that was something. You need to see it, too. Okay, okay, I'll see the video, but what else have you done to really um, prove and try this word that you heard? You know what I mean? What else have you done? It's one thing to say, I think, it, I think so. You understand? But uh, you have to keep a little bit of um, reason, you understand, to say, I need to find out a little bit more about this myself. So... With that being said as well, this is kind of a little just catch up, like if you've been watching some of the other videos and um, so you're familiar with some of the other um, words that we have spoken and some of the teachings that we have taught, one of the main, um, one of the main reasons that we've been focusing more on our inner self or the inner sense you see what I'm saying, and the stability within our souls is because when the word says about the abomination of desolation, stand in the holy place, if you look in the parentheses outside that, it says, he who reads, let, he, let, let him who reads understand. Let him who reads in, that, in our sense overstand. So when it says the holy place, you have to recognize that where is the holy place. So you have folks looking around and say, I want to be in, in Jerusalem. You understand? Some people may say, I want to be in, um, in Ethiopia. Some people, on the other hand, might say, I want to be in, in, in Vatican Rome. Some people say, I want to be up in, Mount, in, in the Tibet mountains. Uh, some people, you know, you understand what I'm saying? They want to be at a certain site where perhaps other holy people have charged and made holy or use the radiation fields, take a note of that, the radiation fields or the magnetic 
field and charge that place, you understand, either positively or either negatively. You understand, that's where they want to be. But these people, many of them are long gone. So, yes, these sites are still there, but many of these sites, because of the war of, of the fall beings, these sites have been negatively charged. They are now presently negatively charged. So once it's to stand in the holy place, it is not speaking outer, since the word is a, the scriptures is a, is a spiritual book, it is speaking to the inner sense. So once it's stand in the holy place, you're saying stand in the spirit of your mind, in, in the truth, wherever you physically are. You'll stand, recognize the superiority, you'll stand, of the spirit above the flesh. You see, and this is probably one of the most difficult things for any hopeless materialist to do in a couple of days or a couple of weeks or so forth and so on. It's not to say it's impossible, but if they are trying to do that, like I'm trying to make myself, you know, like people trying to, trying to be little creators of themselves in a sense, it's not, going, it's not going to happen. This is why we focus more on our spiritual, the inner life, the principles of the Tawahido, the true Aritta Ahaimano, the true or the correct faith, you know, saying according to the teachings of His Majesty, the testimonies of our Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshia, and according to the testimonies of others who have followed you understand, in that truth and have borne fruit, you understand, fruit that you and I can see and can recognize that matches the standards, you understand, the, the, the standards of the Savior, and that's the B-I-B-L-E. So here, this is the last, one of the last lectures that we did here. This is the Bar Mitzvah, you understand, the right, to, the, the right of passage. We're going to have to probably clear this up. Um, this video might go f before this video gets posted. We're not too sure about which order it's going to come forward in, but this is to signify this is the last thing that we touched on. Um, the thing that we want to touch on right now is to announce to announce the the feast or the festival of trumpets for September 28th. It's AKA also known as by some Jews, or those who call themselves Jews, is known as Rosh Hashanah. However, we have to remind you that Rosh Hashanah, and they know this as well, of course, because they, they study these things, so they're without excuse if they know these things and don't do these things, but Rosh Hashanah does not appear in the Bible, and they'll tell you that Rosh Hashanah is a two-day thing. It's a, it's a, it's a two-day thing is what they'll tell you. It's a, a two-day thing. Partly the reason for this two-day thing is that they cover up one of the most important um, feasts or festivals in the Hebraic um, calendar. In other words, in God's calendar and in Christ's calendar. And this most important is the Feast of Trumpets. And it appears that the Feast of Trumpets coincides with this... Um, Comet. Some call it a comet. Others say that it's not, it can't be a comet, but it must be a planet. And this is all related to the something called the Elenin, Elenin or Elenin. Either it's called Elenin on one hand or Elenin, the common Elenin, and it's connected with with um, some say the Yom Ha Adon or the Yom Ha Hadin. Yom Hadin, the day of the Lord, or Yom Hadin, the day of judgment, the day of judgment, which coincides with the Feast of Trumpets, slash Christians connect this with rapture. They say that based on many of their interpretations, this is rapture. Now, we don't deny that there is rapture. What we deny, based on the scriptures and our study and being guided by the Holy Spirit, is that the way that some have purported the rapture to be, based on their movies, based on their imagination, is vain and is not true and is not backed up by the clear interpretation 
and by any real or true interpretation that's in context with the truth of the Bible. Now, this common Elenine, some call this the Marantha or the Maranatha, you understand, which means come, O Lord, in the, in the Syriac, in the, in the early Christian um, Syretic um, language or the Syriac Arabic, Syretic Arabic. Now, 2 Timothy 4 and 8 is where this particular reference is. So take this down as well and, and pray over and study this. The crown of righteousness is given to all those who love Jesus appearing. Now, the point about Jesus returning is also interesting, too, because the Bible, you see, the Bible seems to clearly state that I am with you always, even to the end of the world, which correctly interpreted means even to the end of the age. And then you hear many Christians saying that they can't wait till Jesus returns. They're looking for him. Is that him? They're looking for a sign. Now, the word also says that woe to those who are looking for a sign, especially those who proclaim that they have faith. You know, so if either you have faith, either you admit in what is true already, or you need a sign. Now, this doesn't mean that there won't be signs, but there are some who look. He says those who seek. He said woe to those who seek a sign. He says no sign will be given to them. Besides, what was it, the sign of, of, of Jonah on one hand? He said Jonah, and then he said the Queen of Sheba on the other hand. Well, with the Queen of Sheba sign, that is clearly the Ethiopia sign. That is clearly, um, the, we can even say the East Africa sign by extension. That's clearly the Rastafari sign. And that's clearly the sign of, of, of I and I in this time. Now, the Jonah sign is interesting, too, because Jonah preached to a place called Nineveh. If you do a little bit of research, Nineveh is uh, either Kurdistan or somewhere like that, where the Kurds were. It's related to Iraq. So, so that's that, that part of the world is also in the news. So we see the Babylon, ancient Babylon, Iraq, Iran, that region is in the news. And we see the Horn of Africa as well is in the news. So we, we can see those signs are there. Now, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 4 says, Ye brethren are not in darkness that the day should overtake you as a thief. Now, many interpret this to be the day of the Lord, that the day of the Lord should overtake you as a a, as a thief. Now, concerning this particular um, September 28th, September 28th, 2011, according to the lunar interpretation and the lunar calculation, that would be the Feast of Trumpets. Some add on to this, this could be the rapture of the church. Some say, watch out for Yeshua. They're, they're telling people that uh, a sign of Jesus or a sign of Yeshua is going to be seen. Now, remember, Christ himself says, I am with you always. I am with you always, even to the end. Now, some Christians will say, yes, but that's just spiritually. We're looking to see him. You see, these are flesh and blood, in a sense, um, Christian, so we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but the spiritual idea that we, we um, wrestle with is denying the fact that if he is there with us in spirit, he is there with us in truth. If we have to see a physical, like see him in the clouds or see him in a piece of bread or something like that, you know, because it looks like an image that men have made well after the date and time perverting it, whitewashing it, then you are looking at false signs. This is why we encourage ones to elevate to the spiritual. You understand? To elevate to the spiritual. Um, Matthew 13 and 44 says again, the kingdom of heaven, the Mengistu Samayat, is like to treasure hid in a field. The which, when a man hath found, he hideth it. Hmm. And for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth the field. This is an interesting um, parabolic here. 
where the Moshiach, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, is saying that the kingdom of heaven, the Mengistah Samayat, is like to a is likened to a treasure, is likened to a treasure that is hid in a field. And the field, of course, is likened to the world. But anyway, the which when a man hath found, when a man hath found this treasure, what does he do? According to the Moshiach, he hideth it. Hmm. And for joy, and he has joy now, he goeth and selleth all he hath and buyeth the field. When, when I read this here, it reminds me of the Ethiopian eunuch. Doesn't it remind you of the Ethiopian eunuch? I guess the joy part where it's the Ethiopian eunuch, when he turned around, uh, Philippe O's Philip was taken from his sight, and he just went on in joy. You understand? And Ethiopia becomes part of that so-called hidden, hidden empire or hidden kingdom of Christ, or that, that Zion, that African Zion, especially from a Western white European perspective. You understand? Ethiopia was, was for most tents and purposes, basically hidden for almost 3,000 years until its real emergence into the world scene um, quite recently, but majorly with uh, His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, the elect of God, the king of kings of Ethiopia. And still many Christians, unfortunately, those who call themselves Christians would deny Ethiopia out of hand, and that must be just a part of the 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 the, the disease, the, the curse, um, the demon, um, the demon possession of racism. It's through that demon possession of racism that they would dismiss Ethiopia and the Ethiopian testimony out of hand, because they want to. Um, um, uh, it's a self-righteousness for, for their kind. Some would say, well, aren't you doing the same thing, talking about black Lord and Savior of life? No, we're just acknowledging the fact. They have not been able to dismiss the fact. They say, well, no, he's not black or he's not this, and they bring these facts, and we prove to them that the facts are false, that, that, that what, what, they, what they're trying to tell us, you understand, is a lie, and what we are trying to tell them, the, the evidence that we bring is still true and they're not able to dismiss this, so they say, well, it doesn't matter what race he is. Be that as it may. This particular Matthew 13 and 44, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto or like to treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof he goeth, and selleth all that he hath, and he buyeth the field. In other words, he sells everything he has to gain possession of this field because he knows that within it is his treasure. Brothers and sisters, take this particular verse down. Um, it's, 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 there's much in this particular verse. And for, for example, you know, come think about it when we talk about the Aliyah, Rastafari Aliyah, coming out of Babylon, or re, re, repatriation, that gets confused in some people's minds with reparation. Some are saying, well, I ain't going nowhere until y'all give us 40 acres and a mule, and y'all give us um, some payment for our ancestors' um, enslavement. If you follow that course, you are going to be woefully ashamed you understand when it comes down to it. This is not to say dismiss the fact that they lied and, and they owed our ancestors and perhaps by extension they also owe us. But if you're going to get stuck on that, then you're going to get stuck on that. And you're not going to be able to go. You're not going to be able to sell all that you have. And you're not going to be able to buy that field. It is very cut and dry. So it says that when one really spiritually, remember the kingdom of heaven is a spiritual reality, when we recognize that this good news of the king of kings and his Christ is a spiritual reality, by and by we come to recognize the treasure that's hidden in that field. And that when we find that, we recognize that we also have to hide that within ourselves. Because the world will seek to take it from me. The world will say, oh, look, people are starving. I don't want to go to Africa. You know what I mean? All that kind of stuff. And you'll find that um, everybody wants to go to Africa except those who have the, 
the divine and the God-given right to it. You know what I mean? And that's the lost sheep. But be that as it may, let's move forward because we just want to target and touch on a couple of um, a couple of main things in, in this presentation here. Now, in four months or less, we can really find out, you understand, probably actually less than that, um, at this present time, we can find out if the comment that's named um, Elinin or E. Lenin is a comet or is it a planet or is it a type of star? See, there are some who say this comet is not really a comet. And we have to think back to the Hale-Bopp thing. And we have to think back to the 1994 with the, 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 the seven or so days preceding the King of Kings Earth Day. You understand the Son of Man Day, the, 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 the head of creation, July 23rd, back in 1994. That had initiated this whole retrograde, this retrograde that occurred with um, um, Jupiter and that was said to have a long duration. I remember a couple of years ago when I read it, if I'm, if I'm not incorrect, it said that it would have a duration of like 10 or 20 years, that we would be in a 10 or 20 year retrograde. That means all the progress on certain levels that was going on back in 94, 93, 94 would be retrograded. And the forward grade or the prograde would not resume for another decade or two. I must share with you, brothers and sisters, when I heard that, seeing what we were doing back in 1993 90, and 94. Um, some of you, if y'all can recall back then, you're spiritually attuned. As one of I and I, uh, sister in Florida, even she was one of the few that recalled that, yeah, wasn't that interesting? Around 93, 94, the whole Jupiter, when the comets fell on Jupiter and they announced the retrograde, that it's like everything flipped upside down. I mean, everything, some of it in the Federation, Ethiopian World Federation, we recognize, if, if we're attuned with that, we can see that was when things changed, many of us. Our families were, it's like Satan, like, like the Bible says, Satan is, is cast down, he's angry, and, and those who dwell on the earth level, woe to them. There was joy in heaven with the devil being and Satan being cast down, but there was woe to those on earth. So there was a lot of setbacks. That retrograde signified many, many setbacks, many of them that there has been no real recovery for some of us. It was like Job. Some of us became like Job. That's what we can feel, Job. You know, we became like Job. We lost everything, quote, end quote, that we had. Let's move forward. You know what I mean? So when people talk about little, little, little sacrifices, you know what I mean, or little, little acts of doing good, which they think is a big sacrifice, like material, financial, monetary. Listen, and, and listen carefully. Don't you see what's happening economically with money? So don't you understand? Haven't you gotten, you know, haven't you heard the trumpet blow? Well, if you haven't heard the trumpet blow, you're going to hear the trumpet blow. So stay tuned. And shalom. Ras Tafarit.